you'll start seeing um, attendees come in now. I'm um, broadcasting. Oh, um, okay. So then they'll be able to. I was in practice mode before. Oh, we're coming in, in practice room. Okay. Yes, when in. we're in process mode, other attendees are there in a waiting room. Um, they're in a holding pattern until we oh. uh, come until we broadcast. So they're out there somewhere. No, they're they're attending now. They're coming in. We so yeah, far we have ten. Okay, uh, can so they can hear us now? Yes. Oh God. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Housekeeping slide. Yes. Welcome to our first. Uh, virtual conference, Empire Baptist. We want everybody to get settled. Come on in, welcome, good morning. Good morning, everyone. We ask that you would join, join with us. Uh, amen, you're in session one, uh, Christian education in a digital age. We wanna make sure you're at the right setting. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. We invite all of you uh, to join with us. Amen. Join with us, and we will have a Christian education at a digital in a digital age. Our presenter will be Dr. Jeffrey Guns. Amen. So we invite you all. We invite you all to come. Amen. We're going to try and start our sessions on time. Amen. So we invite you to come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Amen. Amen. Bless you. We welcome you all. We welcome you all. And this is a new thing, a new era for us, uh, uh, doing things uh, using our social media platforms and our technology. So again, we're, we welcome you. This is sponsored by the Empire Baptist Missionary Baptist Convention, Amen Congress of Christian Education, Amen. We're celebrating 125 years this year, and so we're we're inviting all to join with us. Uh, we praise the Lord. Uh, registrations went real well, and we're anticipating having over 100 participants this year. So we invite you to come. Uh, time is going to be of the essence. Amen. We have uh, two sessions each morning. Amen. One at 9 o'clock a.m., and then we start our second session at 10.30 a.m. Uh, so we want to let you know that, that we are... Uh, trying to be very good stewards of your time, amen. And we pray that you'll be uplifted and edified by the presentations uh, as we're getting ready for a new thing. God is doing a new thing as a result of this COVID-19 pandemic, amen. And we're having to uh, look at how we serve as the church of God in the world today. So again, we welcome you, amen, we welcome you. Uh, we actually get uh, pads and uh, Bibles, you're in, a, you're in a setting, Christian education setting. So if you have pads, pens, and Bibles, amen, we invite you. Uh, welcome, we welcome you. We welcome you as you come in. Uh, welcome to all our participants today. Amen. Amen. Praise God for all of you. Praise God for all of you. Uh, in the first five minutes, we'll be doing our welcoming and housekeeping. Amen. Then, uh, and after the five minute uh, mark, uh, we move into the presentation. So that's roughly uh, how we will be formatting today after Dr. Guns does his presentation. Then we'll have a question and answer period at the end. So, again, we're just giving a few more folks a chance to get in. Amen. I'll give a few more folks a chance to get in. This is new to many people, so we're allowing uh, others to come in. Uh, so come on in. You're in the right place if you're for session one of Christian education in a digital age. Christian education in a digital age. That's our presentation for today. We hope you're in the right place. Amen. We hope that you are being prayerful. Amen. As we seek to uh, move forward with our presentation. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is a webinar format, not uh, not your normal meeting format. So uh, some of your functions will be limited today. Amen. But this is a webinar format, not a typical Zoom meeting format. Uh, 
praise God. We'll be highlight, highlighting our presenter, and then we'll be working with a question and answer period uh, as we move forward. Okay. God bless. Okay, praise the Lord. Uh, Okay. Again, we welcome those that are out in the waiting room to come in. At this time, we're getting ready to start our uh, presentation on today. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Welcome. And uh, uh, we want to welcome you to our Empire Baptist 2020 virtual conference. Amen. You're in session one, uh, Christian education in a digital age. Our presenter is going to be Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Guns. And let me just introduce Reverend Dr. Guns to you. Uh, for this morning, amen. Reverend Dr. Guns, amen, is the senior pastor of the Second Calvary Baptist Church, amen, located in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, Reverend Dr. Guns is a husband and father. He's the state director of the Virginia Baptist State Convention. He's the vice chair of the Sunday School Publishing Board Executive Council. He is a prolific writer and author of several books. Uh, Dr. Guns is one of the great minds in our uh, convention and denomination. Uh, he is a leader in our denominational work and Christian work across the land. We welcome you, Dr. Guns, and we're praying for you. Uh, we want to just uh, uh, speak to you as we move forward today. We have a sponsor for our session, for this virtual conference session, and that is uh, known as Project HOPE. Amen. And we have a quick slide for you to see our sponsors. Amen. Project Hope. Amen. So we actually slow show that slide, please, for Project Hope. Uh, we want to acknowledge their uh, support and their uh, participation in this endeavor. Uh, Project Hope is in conjunction with the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated. Amen. Uh, they have an All of Us research program and they are monitoring us. Uh, Project Hope is designed to help us, amen, be healthier people and healthier congregations, amen, especially uh, focusing on the minority community and our health initiative. Uh, Project Hope uh, seeks to put health ambassadors, amen, health ambassadors uh, in every church and every locale, amen. We need to raise the health of our various organizations and ministries, amen. We want to be a blessing to our communities, so we acknowledge Project Hope. Uh, we ask that you would visit the Project Hope uh, website, amen, www.hopenbc.com. Again, www.hopenbc.com, amen. That is our sponsor for today. Let us continue with some housekeeping. We just want to remind everyone that's joining us that we are in a webinar format, and in a webinar format, you're free to use the chat, but we ask that you would direct uh, specific questions of the presenter. Uh, use the question and answer box, amen. There's a question and answer feature, amen. And if you would use the question and answer feature, that's where you can raise questions that you may have on the presentation. Uh, we uh, are anticipating a large number joining us this morning. Amen. So everyone may not be able to get all of your question asked, uh, but you can raise questions and then we will select questions at the end of the presentation and we'll try to cover as many as possible. Amen. Uh, we, uh, God bless you. Uh, we are getting ready to begin uh, today and we're going to open with a moment of prayer. 
uh, let us bow our heads together. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Dr. Guns to you, Lord God, and we pray that you anoint him afresh, that you would give clarity to his mind as he seeks to bring his presentation to us today. We pray, Lord God, for every participant in this webinar conference, Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, uh, that this will be a, a momentous and historic occasion in the history of Empire Baptist as we seek to reach your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Dr. Gons is in your hands. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning to, uh, to everyone. God bless you. What a, what a great joy it is for me to uh, have an opportunity to share uh, with you all today. Uh, I want to thank my uh, a good friend uh, and colleague uh, in the work of Christian education, uh, Dr. Edward O. Williamson, who serves as your dean uh, for the invitation to be a part of the, uh, this first virtual Congress of Christian Education for the Empire State Convention. Uh, to, uh, to your president, uh, Dr. Carl Washington, I've known him for a number of years, uh, and to uh, Dr. Banks, uh, God bless you and thank you uh, so very much for uh, this invitation. Uh, I've been asked to uh, say some things about uh, digital Christian education or Christian education in this digital age. Um, and that's what I'd like to spend about the next 40 minutes talking about and then leave some time uh, for, your, uh, for your questions. Uh, without a doubt, uh, without a doubt, we are living in some um, uh, very interesting times um, where, and, and I often tell our congregation that on the 15th of March, the last time we gathered uh, as a congregation, everything changed, the world changed, and we have been evolving ever since. Um, and the, uh, the world has not waited for the church to catch up. Uh, we've had to kind of move uh, forward, and I, I really do appreciate uh, what, uh, uh, what you all are doing and what Dr. Williamson is doing. Uh, he and I have had uh, a number of conversations about uh, virtual Christian education, online Christian education, and I uh, simply want to say that this is not a new conversation for us. Uh, we have been talking about online learning platforms for Christian education, uh, probably about the last four years, recognizing that we live in a changing time and that uh, these changes have necessitated that we would uh, move in a different, uh, a different direction. Your theme scripture is uh, found in Isaiah. Um, and uh, I, uh, I wanna read uh, a passage uh, that uh, kind of, you know, serves as the, as the focal point of what I'd like to uh, spend some time talking with you about today. You can uh, save all of your questions and I'll try to uh, answer as many of those as I can when we get to the, uh, to the end. Uh, in Mark chapter two, verses 21 and 22, Jesus said, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear results. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost in the skins as well. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. New wine into fresh wineskins. So I have a presentation. I wanna, I, I'm going to uh, share this screen, uh, and, and this will be uh, what will guide us uh, throughout the course of this uh, presentation uh, today, um, this morning. So um, I, this is, uh, I've, in, I've, in, I've entitled this, uh, uh, Christian Education in a Digital Age, Getting Ready for a New Thing, which is the, uh, the conference theme. And... Um, Let me, uh, all right. So uh, on the 10th of May or the 11th of May, I wrote a post as I was, as I was thinking about, about some things. Uh, 
that congregations that desire to be who they used to be will not become the congregations they need to be in the post-COVID-19 era. Uh, right after the, the shutdown, as, we, as we'll call it, uh, when things began to uh, be shut down, when churches closed, uh, when businesses closed, when things started to uh, cascade into a massive shutdown of the country, many churches, many pastors, and I was one of them, really struggled with trying to figure out what we were going to do and how were we going to navigate this COVID-19 era. We had already been putting into place some, uh, some online uh, uh, classes and using Zoom uh, for the delivery of our uh, uh, Certificate of Progress program instruction and some other things. But we really hadn't thought uh, far beyond that because no one anticipated that this will go on. But just think about this for a moment. Um, congregations that desire to be who they used to be will not become the congregations they need to be at the post-COVID-19 era. Whatever you were uh, on the 1st uh, of March is not who you need to be trying to be uh, when this uh, comes to an end. Uh, because the COVID-19 has disrupted the world permanently. It's changed everything. It's like 9-11. Everything changed. Everything about flying and travel changed. So everything has changed. Uh, nothing is the same. Nothing, is, nothing looks the same. Uh, and nothing will be the same. Uh, the world has been disrupted. And when you think about it, uh, the church and religious life has been disrupted. Uh, retail commerce, stores closed, businesses shut down. It seems that the only thing that was really open was, uh, was Amazon, Walmart, and Target. But everything else shut down. Um, domestic and international travel uh, has been severely impacted. Uh, airlines are only flying about 80 to 90 percent of their normal capacity. Educational systems were, uh, were disrupted. Students were sent home uh, oftentimes without any of the resources they needed to continue their education. Healthcare, and I guess, I guess those of you who live in New York, you are very much aware of how healthcare uh, systems were impacted. Uh, political systems, uh, everything, everything about life in America and life in the world has changed and changed and had been disrupted. Uh, the, uh, the impact has been felt uh, really acutely among churches and other faiths. There's some churches that have completely shut down and are no longer uh, even operating. And I guess this is a picture that can really uh, relate, that you can really relate to. Uh, but most of you all who live in New York where there's a lot of snow, you're used to driving in snow. But being from Virginia, uh, two inches of snow can become a crisis. And to say nothing of several inches of snow. And there's nothing worse than being stuck in the snow. Um, and that's what has happened to a number of churches. They have pretty much just they're just kind of stuck where they are and unable to move. And so when you think about the normal uh, church operations, when you think about what churches normally do, uh, the weekly worship gatherings have been severely impacted. Churches have not gathered, don't know when, uh, many of them don't know when they're gonna gather again. The normal business operations, meeting and planning sessions, Christian education programs, Sunday school, workshops, conferences, everything has gone into hibernation. Uh, the church's community engagement, uh, CLS COP, we operate a CLS school. Uh, we, um, we have all four phases of the Certificate of Progress program in operation uh, in our church. Uh, and um, everything that would normally be considered uh, the, what we routinely do has been disrupted. And so uh, churches are uh, really severely impacted. And um, many churches shifted into just trying to survive, just trying to figure out how to make it, how to survive from one week to the next week, how we're gonna keep our offerings going, how we're gonna, how we're gonna deal with members who are in the hospitals, funerals, weddings, everything uh, was just uh, uh, turned upside down. 
And so we decided that we would shift from surviving to thriving, uh, that we would shift from surviving to thriving. So, and I want you to kind of get that in your mind, that, um, uh, that as you think about where your church is, uh, you think that we are no longer in a survival mode, but we want to think about how do we thrive in this area? How do we blossom and bloom uh, to become the people in the congregations that God wants us uh, to be? And I think it all begins with seeing possibilities and seeing the possibilities uh, for how to do things differently, how to explore uh, new possibilities and which way are we going? And so the and so the world is just kind of wide open for us, and uh, churches have to kind of think about that. Now, just think for a second when you look at that picture uh, of either the sun rising or the sun setting. All right, uh, it depends on your perspective: uh, the sun rising or the sun setting. Um, it, it could be it, it could be either or, and so what uh, what we need to think about is that the world has changed and will continue to evolve. The world has changed and will continue to evolve. And so, in one sense, uh, the sun is setting on what we used to do, who we used to be. The sun is rising on a new day uh, for the church and for Christian education and how we think about. Christian education today. And so when you think about it, and, and if you're taking notes, uh, you can uh, just, uh, just consider these, 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 these five key questions. What is changing in the world we live in? That's something that leaders need to think about. What is changing in, in our world? Um, how will these changes Im impact the church? How is this shutdown uh, this social distancing, this physical distancing, this wearing of masks, all of these things, how will they impact the church? Are they permanent? Are they temporary? Uh, so what's going, to, what's going to impact the church? And then how are we going to respond? That's, a, that's the, other, the third question. How will the church respond uh, to this new church context? And then what needs to happen for us to make the leap from the past into the future? What has to happen? And then what and who are the hindrances that will keep us from embracing the new church and ministry context? You gotta think about what's gonna get in the way and then who's gonna get in the way? Because not only do you have challenges with, with systems and uh, resources and other things, you also have challenges with the way people think. Some people will think that we don't need to do anything, that things are gonna go back to being what they used to be. But uh, you, you gotta anticipate that. And so anticipation is critical to moving forward. Being able to anticipate what's going on, uh, what's coming, and then being able to innovate. Um, and so when you think about these, these are some critical considerations. Uh, and some of these are things that I've shared with our leaders as we think about uh, this post COVID-19 era. So uh, number one, how do you increase member engagement? You know, if your membership scattered, wherever people live, how do you increase member engagement? How do you connect to people in your congregation? How do you connect? How do leaders connect? How do you keep the members connected to one another? Number two, what improvements do we need to make with our technology and staff? This is the big hurdle for a lot of churches, making improvements with your technology and staff because what this, what this COVID-19 has done is it, it, ha it reveals to the world our capabilities. Um, you, you see pastors doing their morning service from their dining rooms, uh, from their living room, from their kitchen table. Um, churches don't have social media staff uh, and, and not having in place the kind of staff that you need. And so I, I'm one who believes that the staffing requirements uh, for church ministries in the future 
are going to entail the need for having um, individuals who are uh, who have technology skills, uh, who have broadcasting skills, who have marketing skills, uh, and, and a lot of other skills that we really have not necessarily paid attention to. Uh, because most churches believe that they can thrive with just a pastor, a janitor, a secretary, and a, and a musician. Those days are gone. You, 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 can't, you can't move a ministry forward with just that. You've got to think about uh, technology, uh, improving your technology, increasing uh, your bandwidth in your churches or in your homes, uh, improving the ability of the church to reach out around the world. A uh, third consideration is how do we ramp up our use of social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and other social media platforms? You know, there was a time when you would talk to some people and pastors and folks and say, oh, no, I don't do social media. I don't do Facebook. I don't do this. I don't do that. Well, uh, this is a whole nother world. And there are billions of people who use social media. And every church needs to have a social media team. Uh, a team of persons whose uh, ministry focus is creating a digital footprint for your church. Uh, fourth consideration, are we willing to make the financial investments necessary to move to level two ministry? Uh, you, you may need to set aside several thousand dollars to improve your, your, uh, your broadcasting capacity, your streaming capacity, your um, uh, your video capacity, uh, just a whole range of things that you may need to, to, uh, to consider. Uh, so being the church in a post-COVID-19 era, uh, three things, accept the new reality, you gotta accept it. It's like sometimes people say, well, you know, the doctor told me I, I have lung cancer, but I'm, it's in the early stages, but I'm not gonna accept it. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not accepting that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not believing it. Well, you don't have to believe it. It's there, it's there. So you have to accept this new concept. You have to accept this new context that we're in, that the world is moving virtual and online. Um, many people may not think about this, but the first airline to, to move away from um, uh, agents selling tickets, travel agents selling uh, plane tickets was Southwest Airlines. They completely moved their business out of the offices of the uh, travel agents and put everything online so that people could make their plane reservations online, travel reservations online. So th this, is not a, this is not a fad. This is a trend that's going to continue. Uh, number two, look for ways to make the ministry accessible to a larger and wider audience. Now, right off the bat, Dr. Williamson said that there have been at least a hundred more people who are uh, being involved with this conference. So this virtual conference has already seen an increase in the number of persons participating and registering. And number three, don't be afraid to venture into new arenas, try new things, and change to become the church that you need to be in the future. You can't be afraid to do new stuff. And uh, churches that are going to prosper are going to have to do that. Now, so what are some areas where, where churches need to look towards engaging the world? Uh, preaching, teaching, ministry, and mission. How do, we, how do we digitally engage the world and work at increasing Christian faith? How do we preach in a digital age? How do we teach? How do we do ministry? How do we do mission? Uh, Christian education. How do we do this? How do we, how do we engage the world in Christian education? Um, how, do we, um, how do we foster our Christian leadership school, uh, our COP programs, our virtual conferences? One of the things I can imagine that people in your, air, in your state deal with is um, inclement weather, uh, probably beginning in de December, January, February, and maybe even into March, that sometimes things just don't, uh, don't go well because of um, the weather and snow. I know in my, in my state, in my city, um, 
it's very difficult to plan anything in January and February be, because of the fact that you don't know what the weather's going to be. If there's a threat of snow, people will uh, stay home and decide that they're not going to be a part of what's going on. Um, the how do you engage families? Uh, how do we uh, how do we uh, help marriages? How do we do counseling? Uh, parenting, providing entertainment, and then how do we serve as a source of uh, connections, helping our seniors uh, and members to stay uh, connected. So, so what are the challenges uh, for churches? And what do churches need to kind of think about? Um, I think that one of the things that we have to be concerned about is creating uh, digital content, creating weekly digital content uh, for uh, our members, for our youth, for our children, for our seniors, uh, and for reaching people. Uh, developing creative ways to engage our membership in the community. This is a very creative platform that we're using today. Uh, I, I would dare say that in January, uh, Dr. Williamson and uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Washington and Dr. Banks uh, would have never been thinking that in June, when we uh, when our Congress meets, that we're going to be meeting virtually. No one anticipated that, but but here we are. Um, and then uh, it is important to envision collaboratively uh, what uh, your church's global uh, uh, COVID nineteen footprint will look like. I tell our leaders that uh, we are a church with two locations. Uh, the first location is 2940 Corporate Avenue, Norfolk, Virginia. That's our first location. And the second location is www.secondcalvary.org. That's our second location. And so churches have to think uh, a lot differently. And so when you think about uh, your goals or things that you should be thinking about, uh, I, I think that every congregation and uh, every group of church leaders needs to begin to think about how to create and grow a virtual congregation. How do we, how do we expand the church virtually? Uh, you know, there was some discussion uh, maybe a few years ago, people were jokingly saying, talking about when churches really began to get into uh, streaming, that people were at Bedside Baptist. Well, that's a reality now for everybody. Um, and so how do, we, how do we do continuous online Christian education? Um, and, and so what we have done, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but we've done some specific things in terms of online Christian education. Um, creating content that engages the members, uh, community, and learning and serving, giving people an opportunity to learn and serve, being more intentional, in our planning, our organizing, uh, implementing your strategies. Um, churches have to make that a goal. Intentionality. Uh, what I appreciate about uh, this virtual conference is that it was not thrown together, but there was some intentional planning and organizing uh, to implement this. And then a, a, a broader um, collaboration and integration of the, uh, the church's core ministries. And in our church, we have eight core ministries. Uh, how do we, how do we uh, bring about integration and collaboration? How do your churches create integration and collaboration in your congregations between your youth, your seniors, your deacons, your trustees, your, your, uh, your music department and all of that. And then uh, uh, going forth, you know, the one thing that uh, the uh, World Wide Web has done is given the, uh, the church and Christians the opportunity to become apostolic uh, by reaching uh, ac around the world. Now, who and what will be our biggest asset or our biggest liability? When you think about, that's a question that you have to ask. Who's going to be our biggest asset? Who's going to be our biggest liability? Just think about that for a moment. When you look at your church, when you think about your church, uh, what and who are your biggest assets and liabilities? Well, it's leaders. It's leaders. Your leaders. 
If you have leaders who think small, nothing's gonna happen. If you have leaders who are visionary, then uh, there's a strong possibility that the church can move forward. Um, leaders. I wanna, I wanna read from a passage in the First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. Maybe you've heard this passage before. Uh, when, the, uh, when the sons of Israel, uh, the tribes of Israel came to Jerusalem or to Hebron uh, to make David the king over all of Israel, each of the 12 tribes came. And this is what is said about the, uh, the tribe of Issachar. Of the sons of Issachar, men who understood the times with knowledge of what Israel should do, the chiefs were 200 and all their kinsmen were at their command. Now there are four things that are said about these people. Four things that are said about them. They understood the times. So leaders today must understand the times that we're in, this COVID-19 time period. The virus hasn't gone away, but the president wants to act like it's gone away, but the virus has not gone away. Uh, and so how do we then operate in this, in this time period? They were men who had knowledge of what Israel should do. Leaders have to be strategic in their thinking and in their actions. What are we going to do and how are we going uh, to, uh, to survive? Uh, one of the things that we did uh, immediately as soon as they announced this uh, PPP program, we got all of our payroll information and everything together. Uh, and the day that they said you could apply, we applied for that loan uh, because it is fully forgivable. Uh, it is fully forgivable. So we were able to get a loan of $118,000 to cover our payroll for two and a half months. And the loan is fully forgivable. And so this is money that we didn't have to collect. Um, and there were some people who had a, had, a, had, a, you know, had a real challenge with it. Uh, but if it's there, you got to take it because it adds to your resources. It's money that you don't have to spend. It's money that you don't have to worry about collecting. And then if you do collect it, uh, it, it puts you that much further ahead. So they were men who had, who had knowledge of the times and understood what they were supposed to do. They had people. There were 200 of the leaders. There were 200 of the leaders. Uh, and then all of those leaders were able to marshal people under them. You have to have people who are going to get on board with what it is that you're doing. So what kind of leaders will the church need going forward? Leaders who are going to grow spiritually. Leaders who will be responsive to change and not resistors, responsive. Leaders capable of anticipating the next move of God. You need leaders who are going to be innovative thinkers and leaders who are focused on quality and excellence. You know, that, and this is where we need to really kind of look at getting young people involved in these ministries. Now, here's some things. I talked about this a little while ago about uh, staffing things and the kinds of things that maybe you may need to look at and people you'll need to consider in your ministries. You want people with social media skills. You want uh, to take a look at uh, people who are videographers, audio, uh, camera operators. Uh, you want uh, web design people, people who can help you with managing your website. You want social media engagers via the web, people that as your service is being broadcast out over uh, Facebook or YouTube or wherever it is, that there are people who are, who are online engaging people who are, who are there, who are hosting watch parties and inviting friends and family uh, to join with you. You need bloggers and podcasters, online instructors, you need people who will uh, help you with your digital stewardship and virtual engineers. I think that every church should consider, at a minimum, setting up uh, an in-house uh, broadcast studio 
where you can broadcast uh, things from your church via social media. Um, and so here's some assumptions that, uh, that you have to kind of make and think about. Number one, the novel coronavirus COVID-19 is not over. That's the number one assumption that you have to live with. The second assumption is you have to plan with the assumption that it will be with us for at least the next 12 to 24 months, this novel coronavirus. There's no vaccine, there's no real treatment, uh, and we know that it, it doesn't take a lot to spread. Number three, will we need to begin to migrate some of our teaching and training to our virtual platform? As you think about as you think about things. So migrating, migrating from a physical setting to a virtual setting. Will we need to do that? Given where we are now, we're almost six months into the year and it doesn't look like um, that many churches are even going to begin to think about, I know many black churches, uh, you know, in some places in the South, they've gone back to church and People are just falling ill all over the place. It's not going to be long before those churches are closing again. Um, the third assumption is how much training will we need to do to make this work? You know, in terms of training, giving people new skills uh, and, and the like. And then we will need total commitment on the part of leaders and members. So how, how supportive of this shift will our leaders and members be. I was talking to, uh, doing some training with some people in Chicago. And one of the persons said, uh, you know, we have these, uh, these older teachers and uh, you, you know, they don't, use, they don't use technology. So what are we supposed to do? My answer was very simple. You recruit some new teachers. You recruit some additional teachers. You gotta recruit people who can work in this context. You can keep the others, but the fact that the ones that you have choose not to, not to migrate, does that mean that you should simply stand still? Just something to think about. So our attitude towards technology, uh, establish study teams to explore the use of technology, decide on congregational platforms. And what we did uh, probably, what we did in February, of this year, recognizing, uh, as I talked to, uh, I spent some time talking to Dr. Ed Williamson uh, when, I, when I saw the proliferation of this virus in New York, we were talking and it, and it came to me that, okay, we need to begin to make some plans for what will happen. And so we explored different platforms, Zoom, Cisco, uh, Dr. Uh, Williams and I tried out Zoom. We tried out uh, Cisco WebEx. Um, some of us uh, have used Skype, Microsoft Teams, Google Meetings. And uh, we tried a number of these, uh, several of these platforms and settled on using Zoom because it was the, the, um, the easiest platform to use and uh, they made it, uh, they made the, the cost reasonable. And so, it's a hundred and, you know, sometimes people want to, want to um, go the free route. When something is free, it's also cheap, and it's also incongruent with what your real needs are. And so you need to be willing to pay for Zoom subscriptions. Yeah, pay for them. Uh, don't, don't let people talk you into saying, well, we can use what's free. Well, what's free only gives you 40 minutes. You may, you may be having a, a deacon's meeting and you need an hour and a half or two hours. So you need to set aside money for Zoom subscriptions and, uh, and, and, and the things that you'll need to do. In terms of your, your, your Christian education uh, format, uh, we've decided that we were going to, we've tried Google Classroom and uh, we've set along a program called Thinkific. And um, it, you know, it's a, it's a paid service. It, it's, it's, there, there's a free service and there's a paid service. Um, I, I have too much, there's too much to even talk about to even 
uh, try to explain the differences between the two. But as you are planning your Christian education, you need to think about which of the educational uh, uh, mediums you're going to use, whether Google Classroom, Thinkific, or other online training uh, platforms. We spent time training our leaders and teachers on how to use the technology. You got to train your people. You got to train your leaders. You can't be afraid of it. And sometimes you may have to pay some people to, to, uh, to train your leaders. You got to be patient, but you have to train. And, and the more training you do now, the better and the greater is going to be the possibility that you're going to have success. Uh, and then the, uh, the last thing you need to do is launch small scale pilot projects to see how the technology works and is accepted in the congregation. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big, uh, big thing, but just doing small things that, uh, that you can do uh, to, uh, to make this work. Uh, we, uh, we shifted everything in our church to a virtual format, everything. Uh, in March, we shifted everything to a virtual format. Uh, we operated CLS school. Uh, we, uh, our last gathering, in-person gathering, our last in-person gathering was the week of the 15th of March. The very next week, uh, the very next week, everything was online. Everything was online the very next week because we had already planned, had already set up, had already trained the teachers, had already made the investments in the Zoom subscriptions, had already done the things necessary uh, to make sure that we could operate on a minimal level. Uh, we identified someone who could be the uh, uh, fixed Sunday school teacher, and we set up a digital uh, Sunday school class that begins at 9 a.m., runs from 9 a.m. until 9.25, uh, and then our worship service, which is broadcast live via Facebook, YouTube, uh, and our website starts at 930. And, and so you, you have to put in place. Um, and so the, so the notion is that things are going to go back to being what they used to be uh, is invalid. And so the, um, the sun has set on the pre-COVID-19 church. Things are going to be different. Things are different, and churches have to think about that. And so the road leading to the future is wide open. And I want to encourage you uh, to think about, uh, about who you're going to be in the future going forward. So I'm going to stop there. And uh, I see that there's some questions in the, uh, in the chat. And uh, so Dr. Williamson, I'm available to answer any questions that people may have. Yeah. Yes, sir. We thank you, Dr. Guns, for uh, your wonderful presentation. Um, uh, we do have a few. Okay, wait a minute. Technology is interrupting. Sorry. Yeah, I'm looking at some of these. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone asked me, why did you choose Google Classroom over Zoom or other platforms? Well, let me just answer that question. Okay. Uh, this is a question by Doris Waiters. Um, Zoom is a medium of broadcast. That, that's all it is. It's, it's not a, it doesn't provide you with the, the online training tools or classroom tools that you need in order to set up online learning. Um, so Google Classroom just offers one of those formats. Uh, we use Google Classroom, we use, we use Thinkific. I think the, the question would be, why did we use Zoom versus uh, Cisco WebEx or uh, Google Meetings or Microsoft Teams? Uh, we use Zoom because it's the easiest to use. It is the uh, it is the platform that is most widely used by most people in the church, uh, and the easiest to uh, uh, to to incorporate uh, in our program. So, so we chose Zoom uh, over the others. Uh, Google Classroom is just how you deliver your instruction, and so the two are different. Uh, you don't need you, you can you can set up a Christian education program 
without you even using Google Google Classroom. You'd just be talking. But if you got if you got content, if you have um, lesson outlines or videos or other things that you want people to have access to, you'll have to uh, provide some uh, some content. Okay. Uh, do you see uh, Sister Tina Tanner? Uh, she had a question about uh, the COP. Is there a plan to be able to instruct COP classes via Zoom or other social media outlets? And I know you have some experience in that, so would you address that? Uh, yeah. Um, the uh, our State Department of Christian Education, uh, I'm the State Director of Christian Education, we are planning to, uh, uh, over the next, between July and May, uh, to... Uh, uh, to provide all eight courses of phase one of COP. Uh, that is to say that an individual can enroll in our, uh, in our COP program or in COP through our State Department of Christian Education uh, direct, State Director's Workshop and take all six of the courses uh, in phase one of COP over the next year. Um, and then if they're interested in becoming a certified instructor, uh, we will also be offering um, uh, uh, creative ways of teaching and public speaking via, uh, via our State Director's Workshop. This will all be offered via Zoom. Uh, so yeah, and that information will be shared with uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Williamson, uh, and we'll also be putting it out on social media and uh, anyone who wants to enroll can enroll. There is a small enrollment fee of $10 per course. Yes, sir. Uh, also, let me just let people know that your, uh, your presentation will be available. We're gonna create an on-demand page for all registered participants, and it should be available through the Empire Baptist website. We'll have an on-demand page, and we'll have not only the video recording of this presentation, but we also have your, your uh, presentation available for download uh, from the website. So we want uh, want to answer that question. Uh, here's one. Can I, just, can I just add this, Dr. Williamson? Uh, sure. Can I just, you know, I don't have a problem with people using the presentation. Just don't put your name on it. <laughs> oh, say that one more time. I, I don't have a problem with you using my presentation, um, but just don't put your name on it and say it's yours. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and I hope everyone would have the integrity uh, and understand the, the reasoning for that. Uh, we have uh, several, we have a question from Camille, Camille Holmes. Uh, as a 35 year old congregation of a smaller church, multi-generational, uh, uh, let's see, it flipped on me. How would you suggest moving leadership forward into a COVID-19 era? Uh, can you repeat that again? Okay, as a 35 year old con congregant, and I'm gonna see if I can get- uh, Okay, somebody who's 35. Yeah, uh, in a smaller church, multi-generational, how would you suggest moving leadership forward into a COVID-19 era? Most of them are waiting to return to normal. Uh, I, I think, that, uh, I think that, that this has to begin with pastors. Uh, pastors have to provide forward thinking leadership um, and, and helping congregations to understand that things are not going to go back to what they were. Um, even when, even if something is, even when this ends, there are people who have said that they will not be gathered. Mm -hmm. uh, with congregations in the future. They, they, uh, they prefer the online uh, format, they prefer the digital format, uh, and, um, and, and, and they simply have to be able to, uh, uh, to, to move forward with that. Y you know, you can do both. Okay. You know, some people are gonna wanna gather but a lot of people are not going to want to gather and they're going to want to continue. So it has to begin with the pastors. Pastors have to think about who they intend to become going, uh, going forward. Um, I see a question here where someone said, please repeat the, uh, the unforgivable loan and, and who got it. Uh, the, the PPP, the Payroll Protection Program, was a program that was a part of this um, massive 
uh, funding project or money that was put into the economy by the current administration. It allowed you to borrow from your lending institution two and a half months of your payroll, your utility expenses, your uh, interest payments on loans and the like. And if you use the money specifically for that purpose, then the loan was totally forgivable, which meant then that uh, churches, small businesses, nonprofits that, who were able to get that loan uh, got money that they could use in their ministries and in their churches. We applied for the loan. We got the loan. Uh, about $118,000, which meant then that that's money that we didn't have to raise. Uh, and if we were able to raise it, it's, it's also money that we got that we could use for other things. And what we did was we took some of that money and uh, we set up um, uh, 30, uh, $300 grants uh, for members of the congregation who may have been severely impacted by COVID-19 to kind of offset uh, some of their financial uh, uh, stresses and problems. Uh, we have a question. Uh, this is a friend of yours, Reverend Deb, and I'm asking, would she like to ask, ask her question, answer, ask her question herself? And, and uh, but I'll read it to you uh, just to be sure. Uh, Question is, even when we go back into our churches, uh, because of the larger audience we are able to minister to, shouldn't we continue to keep teaching, uh, meeting, et cetera, to some degree online? Uh, the short answer to that is absolutely. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't want to start something and then quit uh, because the reality is, is that more people, many churches have more people viewing their services online than were actually attending before the uh, the shutdown. So you don't want to start something and then stop. Okay. That was my timer. Look, look. Okay. Let me, uh, let me just uh, combine two questions. These are questions asked by Doris Turner and Sister Bonita Washington. Uh, and the questions, uh, one is like explain, think, think if it, and uh, the other one talks about the school system using Zoom and uh, the other instructional tools such as whiteboards and other platform. platform. So I think those two questions can be answered together. Yeah, uh, uh, Thinkific is a, uh, it's just a, it's a platform uh, that is used to house your, uh, your online instruction. Uh, we've decided to use Thinkific in our state convention um, and in our Christian leadership school at our church because it gives us the capacity to, uh, to allow people to go to the site, to register. It gives us the capacity to, to gather information, uh, to do roles and a lot of other tools that are available. It allows the instructor the capacity to, uh, to house all of their instruction. It gives us the opportunity to provide self-learning, self-paced training programs. And there are a lot of other tools that are uh, really useful in terms of facilitating online learning. Like I said, Zoom is a platform for presenting uh, and gathering people. It's like a room. It's like a hotel room. It's like a classroom. It's just a meeting place uh, where people can, uh, can meet. But you have to have a platform uh, to uh, to conduct your uh, your training on. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, we knew we wouldn't have a lot of time to answer all the specific questions that are out there, uh, but we do want to uh, respond to uh, several. Many are interested in continuing their uh, CLS uh, classes and COP program, so we do want to encourage them to do so. Uh, Dr. Guns is the state director of Virginia. Uh, I'm the state director and state dean for New York, and if you talk to me, I can talk to you about how to uh, work out uh, and plan your CLS schools to be offered, and then we'll reach out to uh, Reverend Eric Williams in this uh, uh, time frame uh, to discuss setting up your school and doing that. It's, it's a matter of coordination, making sure that, that certain things are 
are uh, achieved with your school at certain uh, minimal hours of uh, uh, classroom contact are done. Uh, uh, there's a question. I, I want to set some qu last question, and then Dr. Gunn's going to ask if you have any closing remarks. Uh, are there any recommendations for encourage, engaging our senior saints with technology? Uh, are, are you uh, aware of any grants to purchase devices for seniors? Uh, I I'm not. I'm not specifically aware, and that's something that we're we're looking at doing, uh, to uh, to provide uh, seniors with um, with tablets or iPads or um, Kindle uh, devices. I think that one of the mistakes that people make or that we make is assuming that seniors are not necessarily interested in technology. My dad is 93 years old. I've given him an iPad. He has an iPhone. He has a Facebook page. He knows how to go and use his iPad, and and you know, and this, and he, and he had to learn to do this, uh, how to use that uh, technology uh, for uh, things that he he wants to do. He, he, you know, he's not as proficient with it as I am, but the, the minimal things that he wants to do, he can do. And let me just say this, uh, and I really want to encourage. Uh, you to work with your dean uh, in establishing and setting up uh, a, a statewide CLS school, even for churches that may not have one. Uh, you know, what, uh, what technology gives us the capacity to do is to set up a single um, CLS school that everybody, that, are, that everybody in the state can plug into. And that's, uh, that's the beauty of this. It also allows us the capacity for synergy, uh, for engaging and working with people from across the country uh, without necessarily having to have to expend large amounts, large sums of money on travel, hotels, and all of those kinds of things. And so I, I think that um, uh, the technology is uh, where we are right now. And I hope that you will embrace it, not run from it, embrace it, uh, look at how you can use it in your church uh, to do uh, learning for children, uh, Christian education for young adults, uh, for seniors, uh, and the like. The, the, the road is wide open. And uh, the last thing you want to do is want to run away from it. You want to run to it and embrace it. And uh, Dr. Williamson knows that if I can be of help uh, to any of you in any way, uh, you can let us know. And Dr. Williamson, we're going to be doing something uh, for pastors on using Zoom uh, in, the, uh, in the very near future. There'll be a small right. registration fee, but uh, for pastors on how to use Zoom. Okay. Uh, again, Dr. Guns, we want to say thank you. We know this is your first presentation. You got a, uh, uh, and we all thank Dr. Guns for his presentation. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, uh, you know, you're a close friend of mine, and, and just thank you for being part of this first uh, trial run of our uh, state convention and Congress. Uh, we want to say to the participants, remember, we're going to have an on-demand page, and you can go to that on-demand page to review this presentation again. Uh, again, we're going to have uh, presentations available, but what we're stressing is do not take them and make them your own. They are the property, the, the mental property of the presenter. And so therefore your uh, use only, amen. And we ask that you would please just honor that and show integrity with that. Uh, don't take somebody else's information and make it yours. Uh, again, uh, there are other seminar classes throughout these three days. Some will build on top of uh, some of the questions about PPP and other uh, financial things are being addressed with the pastors. And there is a presentation called uh, Back to the Future, the New Normal, that may address some of that for churches that are looking for steps forward. It is now 10 o'clock. Uh, again, we want to give Dr. Guns a chance to take a break between sessions because he is back on deck with us in about 10 or 15 minutes. And so let us uh, close with prayer. Dear God, we ask that you would continue to bless us. Bless Dr. John Guns. Uh, restore him, Lord God, and may we take the seeds that we learn and, and sow them in good soil that they may bear fruit in our lives and in our ministry. We give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, everyone. Get prepared for your next session, which will begin for you 
at 1030 this morning. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Williamson. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.